Hi everyone. I am Shubham, Senior AI Evangelist at China AI. And joining me is Sami. He is an ML engineer at China AI. And in this video, we'll be explaining you how to set up your monitoring for China applications using Prometheus and Grafana tech stack. Sami, before we go ahead, can you tell us a little bit about the role of monitoring in production and why it is important? Yeah, so um, monitoring is one of the most important things when you want to deploy application in production. Um, it allows you to do a, a lot of things, um, but, um, but mainly it allows you to have like having a clear overview of your application in, in our case, the Gina flow. Um, and I got a lot of use cases, like you can do some uh, benchmarking, uh, you can detect bottleneck, you can detect like an issue in your code base. You can do some alerting as well, like for example, where your application are down. Uh, instead of like a user complaining, like I can't connect to the application, then you just have like a message in Slack, which tell you your application is down and like you can react uh, fastly on it. You can like having some report evolution and you can like understand what went wrong in the past. For, so for example, uh, let's say that uh, yesterday I've got a big issue on my application, on my uh, on my Gina search uh, application. Maybe too many users connected or maybe someone tried to hack my application and I don't know what happened, but with the monitoring, I can go in the past and try to understand and investigate what goes wrong. And then in the future, I'll take like decision on a new design and everything. So that's mainly what the monitoring is useful for when it's something really important for uh, having Gina in production. Can you also tell us a little bit about the Prometheus and Grafana tech stack that we'll use for monitoring? Yeah, sure. Now we just released this uh, this monitoring feature and it's uh, it's to use to really leverage all of this metric and all of this monitoring. You need to use uh, the Prometheus and Grafana stack. Prometheus is a tool which will uh, record metrics store the metrics, aggregate the metrics. Um, yeah, so it's doing kind of, you can see, see it as a, a database for the metrics. So it will query all of the information and store it. And then you got Grafana. Grafana, his job is to do the visualization part of, of, uh, of the monitoring. And it will basically talk directly to Prometheus in this uh, query language, this is called the Prom uh, QL. And uh, yeah, Grafana will allow the user to define dashboard and to define the alert and everything. Can, can you also tell us how it works in tandem with Gina applications, like at which layer these text text sits and integrate and talk to a Gina application? Yeah, of course. So Gina application are composed like a Gina search pipeline, but it will be composed of several microservices, uh, uh, which will basically be executor, which will execute like some Python code, like embedding, indexing, uh, matching and everything. So you can think of a Gina flow. It's composed of uh, mul multiple of uh, executor microservices which is connected one to, to the other. And the idea that we have in uh, for the monitoring is each executor, so it's part of the flow, it will expose it old metrics. And then Prometheus, so it is a tool which is installed next to your flow, but not installed in your flow, it's next to your flow. It's a tool which will basically talk to your executor directly. And it will, for example, it will ask him, please make your report. So it's basically, he will call an endpoint and say, what's new? And then the executor, he will say, current, for, he will say currently, this is my, my state, my metrics. So for example, let's say that an executor, he exposed a number of documents he has processed so far. Each time the Prometheus will ask him what's, what's new, he will say, I processed 30 documents. And then next minute, Prometheus will ask again. And then the executor will say, okay, now I process 35 documents. So the executor, he only knows at T time, like at given time, he only knows his state. He don't know about him in the past. It's the job of Prometheus who like each, we, each minute, each 30 seconds, depending on how you configure it, he will ask, and then he will store all of the information. So you can kind of this database here, you can see, which is like a time series, basically, uh, the time and the number of documents. And then, and okay, so this is from like the collecting of the metrics. Grafana, which will leverage this time series, into dashboard. It's as easy uh, as that. Give you an overview on how it's working on the, on the flow level. Different uh, microservices, Prometheus is talking to all of them and Grafana processing it into a nice dashboard. So Sami, if I want to implement it for my Gina application, can you tell me with the help of an example of how I can do it? By, uh, and like what changes in the code do I have to make to enable monitoring in my application? 
So actually, it's really easy to deploy the monitoring. It's as easy as putting the flag monitoring equal true when you are creating the flow. So it's like yeah, just one flag, and then everything under the hood will will be. So basically, each executor will be spawned with this small endpoint, which will contain the metrics. And then, of course, you need to install Prometheus and Grafana, which is two like external tools that are not built in the flow. It's like external. You have to deploy them and kind of connect them together so that Prometheus can talk to your executor and Grafana can talk to your Prometheus. And then you can have this all metric pipeline. Okay, so let's go. Let's start to actually deploy uh, a flow with the monitoring enabled. So we will do today everything in Kubernetes because the monitoring is like a production level uh, features of uh, Gina. And it makes more sense to use it within, within Kubernetes because Kubernetes is like the, the best way to deploy flow when you want to run something in production. So what I have, I've, I have here is a flow. So I will open it. So it's like a really basic flow. You got uh, two parts like a clip encoder, which will take either some text or some image and we'll put it in this embedding space when you can do some search. And, it will, and we will have this uh, simple indexer, which will store all of the embedding so that you can search. And like you, got, you have this index of embed document and then you can have a query, search for a document, he will return the matches. And here you go with your, applica your like search application. So it's like may maybe one of the basic applications that you can build with Gina yet powerful. And you see that uh, allow, like enabling the monitoring on Gina is as easy as adding this, this, this flag here. And then, as I told you, we deploy in Kubernetes. So we dump like the config file for the Kubernetes. So then let, I will, I just need to run this, 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 we got a config uh, file. Maybe I can show you a bit detail what's inside this config. So it's basically contains some YAML file like Kubernetes YAML information to deploy flow. So here we have like uh, this, this. So this this is a file ready to deploy your application in Kubernetes. So this is ready. Uh, like everything is ready for the flow. First, let's uh, deploy. Let's install Prometheus and Grafana on my Kubernetes. Uh, cluster. So here I assume all of you got a Kubernetes cluster running. So now the first step to deploy Prometheus and Grafana is to create the namespace on which you want to uh, yeah, deploy your flow and your Prometheus and your Grafana. So I create a namespace, I switch to the namespace, is to install uh, Prometheus and uh, Grafana. So yeah, it's as easy as executing this line. So it should take, everything looks great. Let's see. Yeah, you see that um, kubectl get pods, kg is my alias for kubectl get pods. But uh, yeah, you see that you got a couple of uh, pods which are running. So this one is for the Grafana, this one is for Prometheus, and then you got a couple of other ones which are actually for internal uh, metrics for like Kubernetes and everything, but we don't have to go into detail here. So we, now we got, uh, Prometheus and Grafana uh, running on your Kubernetes. We got the flow for the YAML ready. We need, just need to apply them. Um, so I just need to do kubectl apply. So I apply everything which is in the config, config file that I show you before. And it will deploy my flow, like the clip flow into uh, the same namespace uh, in my Kubernetes cluster. Okay, this looks great. Um, so you see that um, executor gateway uh, are uh, being created. So it needs to pull the image uh, from uh, our Gina Hub and to initialize, initiate the um, clip model. So it will take maybe a couple of uh, uh, seconds as well. Let's, um, zero is ready, meaning that uh, all of the weight from clip have been downloaded. Cool. So, so what's the next step? The next step is to. The next step is to actually open uh, Grafana. Um, so, uh, so to open Grafana, I will do a port forward of the uh, of the Grafana services on my on my machine. Um, here, I can just open. Uh, so, uh, username is admin for uh, Grafana. Um, so now that we want to do what we want to do, like we got the flow running. Um, we got Grafana and Prometheus running, and we want to import the dashboard or like create the dashboard to visualize all of the metrics. 
So first step is to import. We click on a browse, dashboard browse, import, and then we need to copy paste the code from our GitHub repo. And it will import the dashboard. So here, the dashboard is ready. You see that you have no data. Guess why? Because we didn't actually send any request to the flow. So this is our next step, is to uh, send a request to our rep to repository. So let me open uh, my uh, Jupyter notebook so we can do some actually to do some query. We'll skip the install part because everything is installed on my side. Download some uh, some data that I want to index with clip. So I'm downloading this uh, totally looks like a data set. So you can you can pull and push uh, Docker uh, with uh, with Docker Ray. And uh, yeah, now it's downloading. Uh, this data set is this one. Um, totally looks like data set. So yeah, it's some images uh, that we will index. Okay, that is downloaded. So only a couple of minutes. Um, let's uh, look at what inside this data set. So yeah, it's uh, some some random image coming from this totally data set. So I need to connect to to the to the gateway, but remember everything is running in Kubernetes. So if I actually want to be able to connect my client, which is running on my local PC to the Kubernetes cluster, I need to do a port forwarding. So I need to forward the gateway. So I need to forward the gateway on this uh, five uh, thousand uh, port. Uh, so the port forwarding is running. So now I can connect. So the, on the local machine, it is actually talking to the Kubernetes uh, to the gateway host on the. Kubernetes cluster. So yeah, let's connect. So now we will index uh, 100. So the first 100 image from this totally looks like data sets. So let's do it. Yeah, so you see that it has been indexed. So now what we want to do is to do like to perform. Uh, so we index first and now we want to perform a search. So I want basically to have like the images which is close to, to a dog. So I want to yeah, find dogs in this, uh, in this uh, data set. So I just yeah click on the search. It uh, return me a document, and I could look at the match. So here I look at the first five match, and I plot I plot them. The two first one yeah this is yeah it looks like a dog. Remember that we're only indexing on 100 uh, data points. So yeah it means that these are only basically three dogs in this uh, 100 uh, data point. So this was for like the um, neural search part. Let's come back to the metrics. What happened on the metrics? Let me reload. Now the dashboard is working. We got some data. We can we can like use this data. So what we can see is we received two requests. We did one search, one index, one search, so two requests, and uh, we index 100 document and we search for one document. So it's exactly what I showed you on the screen. And yeah, this is how this dashboard is working. You can have some some report. This one is quite interesting as well because it shows you how much time each request uh, takes to be proceed. So the first request took se seven seconds to proceed. It. And three seconds for the for the next one, which is um, embedding and then doing the match. Uh, what can we see uh, on this dashboard? Then yeah, if you want to only look, look at the the first executor, so the clip uh, encoder, you can go into this executor zero. You can look at the um, at the time you spend calling the endpoint, and you can do the same for. The next, ex the other executor, which is uh, the simple indexer. So yeah, you can see you can see that the indexing is actually 29, 29 milliseconds. It's really, it's really, uh, really fast compared to the uh, clip forward, which is slow because it's running on my laptop uh, or on the CPU. So yeah, that's the kind of things that you can do uh, with the monitoring. Of course, this is like this dash advanced application with Gina. You will need to change this dashboard, and you will need to create your own dashboard with Grafana. Um, so I can show you maybe in detail how it's working under the hood. But basically, you got this, this metrics that you can find on our documentation. You can have like an exhaustive list of the metrics that we expose, like the, that the Geneflow expose. You get from the gateway, for the head, for the executor. So you can mix all of these metrics in your dashboard the same way we did for this one, but you can like incorporate into your own uh, application logic. So that's basically how uh, the monitoring uh, is working. It's as easy to have an, a nice dashboard uh, showing some metrics. Thank you so much. For more details, please do visit our docs, docs.gina.ai. Uh, you'll find the detailed walkthrough of how you can implement the monitoring in your Gina application.